What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trap Fish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about cloudy aquarium water. If your tank looks like this, this video is going to help you figure out what's going on with your aquarium and hopefully rectify it for you. If your aquarium looks like this though, this is an algae bloom and I recommend clicking the link right here. That'll help you guys figure out how to rectify that. So cloudy aquarium water, specifically if it's white cloudy aquarium water, is a bacterial bloom. And basically what's happening is something has caused your aquarium to become out of equilibrium with your bacterial colonies versus your ammonia production. And your bacterial colonies are trying to multiply themselves rapidly to reestablish that equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple different ways that the aquarium can be thrown out of equilibrium and talk about how we can fix that. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is a new cycle. So in a new cycle, whether it be fish in or fishless, in a fish in cycle you're going to have your fish in there, you're going to be feeding them, the fish eat and they poop and produce ammonia. In a fishless cycle where you're going to be adding uh, either ghost feeding or adding ammonia source ourselves as the hobbyist and that's how ammonia is added to that aquarium. Both aquariums have ammonia being introduced into them which is going to allow the bacterial colonies to grow, which is going to result in a bacterial bloom when the tank is newly establishing. So like I said, the bacteria is growing to meet an equilibrium with the ammonia production. So that's basically why you're seeing a bacterial bloom. The bacteria is colonizing and it's in the water column, which is why it looks white and cloudy. Once it reaches that equilibrium, it's going to settle down on the surfaces in your aquarium, in your filter, literally any physical surface. It's not going to remain in the water column. And once it settles down onto all those surfaces, your water will clear. So that's basically how it works. Uh, simplified quite a bit, but that's basically how it works. So some things once your aquarium is established that can cause a bacterial bloom is adding new fish or increasing your bio load. So you might be thinking, aren't those the same thing? And no, not really. So adding new fish is going to increase your fish load and increase your bio load in that aspect. But you can also increase your bio load without adding fish. And you can do that by feeding more. So if you decide that you have uh, fish in your aquarium and they're not really growing the way you want them to, or you want to grow them a lot faster, or you want to put some size on them, you're going to start feeding more, right? Which is going to increase your bio load. So basically, your bio load is the amount of ammonia and waste that's being introduced into the aquarium, which is going to eventually turn into ammonia and then be broken down by your bacterial colonies. That is your bio load. So adding new fish, you're going to feed a little more, it increases your bio load. Or you have fish, you want to grow them more, feed more, increase your bio load. So anytime you increase your bio load, your bacteria, if it's a large enough increase, is going to have to bloom. You're going to get a bacterial bloom in your in your water column and eventually it will go away. But increasing bio load can cause bacterial blooms. Um, large, slow water changes. So water changes in and of itself do not remove bacteria. What does remove bacteria is if you do a large, slow water change and the surfaces in your aquarium get exposed to the air and are allowed to dry out, you can experience bacterial die off. So for example, in this aquarium back here, if you were to drain the water down past the driftwood and then bring it back up, if the driftwood here was allowed to dry out, any bacteria that's on that is going to die off. So if you've lost enough bacteria, you could uh, it could result in a bloom, which would have to try and recolonize all the bacteria that was lost, and you could get a bacterial bloom that way as well. Um, if you turn your filter off, or if you experience a power outage, or your filter fails, right, and turns itself off, you can have bacterial die off from that, which would result in bacterial blooms once you get it turned back on, replaced, reestablished. Um, the bacterial loss is going to have to be regained, so you could experience a bacterial bloom that way too. Um, over cleaning and over maintenance, if you do a lot of gravel vacuuming, water changes and filter maintenance all at the same time, you can experience a, a large loss of bacterial colony and you'll get a bloom from that. If you're curious about over cleaning, I got a video right here for you guys. Um, or if you guys simply use the filter cartridge system on a lot of hang on back filters, 
Um, in your filter itself, those cartridges are going to be what's holding most of your bacteria that resides in your filter. And if you remove those cartridges and put a new one in, you're essentially removing all of those bacterial colonies, which is why I personally recommend running hang on backs with sponge. That way it's easily cleanable. You maintain your colonies. And if you're curious about that, link right here. All right, now that we've talked about all the different ways that you can get a bacterial bloom, what do you do when you actually have one? So the first thing that I recommend to you guys is make sure that you have some kind of test kit. Uh, personally, I recommend the API Master Test Kit. This is what most hobbyists use. And if you're reaching out on forums or Facebook or something like that, looking for help, this is what most people are going to recommend to you um, to be able to provide you the best help that they can. Um, so that's personally what I would recommend. And what you're going to use this test kit for is you're going to be checking for ammonia and nitrite spikes. So, like I said earlier, you've thrown your aquarium out of equilibrium somehow, and basically your ammonia production and your bacterial colonies are offset a little bit. So you want to make sure that you're not getting any large ammonia or nitrite spikes, which are very detrimental to your fish. So that's why you use the test kit. Now, if you are getting ammonia or nitrite spikes, you can use Seachem Prime um, right here. And Seachem Prime, what it does is it detoxifies 1 ppm ammonia for a standard dose of Prime for 24 to 48 hours. Personally, I dose it every 24 because you don't know if the efficacy of the medication or the Prime has worn off by that 48 hours and you don't want to be exposing your fish to the harmfulness of ammonia or nitrite. So you can dose that, it will detoxify ammonia and nitrite for 24 hours, and you would just dose prime daily until you see your ammonia and nitrite spikes reduce, which at that time your water should be beginning to clear because the bacterial colonies are re-establishing themselves on the surfaces in your aquarium. Now, you could also add a bacterial additive if you want to, but it is definitely not a requirement. You don't have to do that. Um, but if you do want to do that, I recommend Fritz TurboStar 700 or uh, Dr. Tim's One and Only Live Bacteria. Uh, those products have worked very well for me as well as many other fish keepers in the hobby. So if you want to add a bacterial additive, those are the ones that I could personally recommend. Um, but as long as you are monitoring your ammonia and nitrite, dosing prime if you have spikes, eventually your tank will reestablish that equilibrium, the water will clear, and you will have nice crystal clear water like you see behind me in my aquariums. Um, so basically, long story short, have patience, uh, monitor your parameters, and the tank will reestablish itself and the water will clear effectively. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any questions on cloudy aquarium water or aquarium cycling or anything like that, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I will help you guys out as much as I can. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.